So why don't we transition to our comfortable seat for uh, meditating tonight? Um, sometimes that's orienting yourself away from your screen. If you want to take a minute to find your comfortable seat, right? We can practice meditation in a lot of different postures. And the most important thing is always finding an arrangement that feels like you can be there, that you can actually arrive. And so comfort is always, um, important. It's some balance, some middle path between comfort and alertness. <clears throat> and usually when we're sitting upright, if we're not doing a walking meditation or a lying down meditation, that means finding a settled seat and a long spine, if you can. So this act of <clears throat> what we could call taking your seat means finding that balance of comfort and alertness. <clears throat> One of my friends, Maho Kawachi, a teacher, came up with this little way of talking about taking our meditation seat upright but not uptight. And in taking our seat, there's also a sense of letting go whatever came before. Not to say that it doesn't come with us, whatever your day was like, or if something big just happened to you, or if there's anticipation. But there's taking an attitude that if I give myself this time to practice, I can actually return to the details of my life, maybe a little bit more grounded and open hearted. And I'll be able to navigate them with that skill. So I don't have to use my meditation session to figure out my to do list, I can let it go. I can let it be. And then we'll just use for the first portion of our practice, <clears throat> this very simple and foundational object of mindfulness, which is the sensation of the body breathing. Many of us, we probably prefer letting our eyes gently closed, but many practitioners also practice with eyes open. But the important thing is that we are just feeling the breath as it moves in and out easefully. We're not manufacturing the breath, 
although you may find that you want to elongate the breath just to be able to track it or be with it. Perhaps you may find softening the belly helps. And we're not trying to catch the breath. We're not trying to force the breath. We're actually just for a moment letting our mind join or ride the breath. Let's see if we can soften effort or hard work. Just take more of an attitude for the next five or eight minutes. The breath is always happening. My mind has to be somewhere when I can remember Let's just let those two be together. Mind joining the breath. And if the mind wanders off, no need to scold. Just see, having wandered, if the mind can gently Rejoin the breath. So I'll ring the gong and we'll just practice mindfulness of breath for five or six minutes together in silence.
So having practiced for a period mindfulness of breath, that tends to have a settling effect on the mind, even if we do it for five minutes. And having practiced mindfulness of breath, even if you notice that your mind is very wild, there's usually an increase in awareness. So just the repetition of mind wandering off and then coming back here to body and breath has a settling effect. And this settling effect is a good ground for contemplating, contemplating our experience. So at this point, we're going to turn our attention to a contemplation related to what I want to talk about tonight, which is this list from classic Buddhism that's also very applicable. The eight worldly dharmas or the eight worldly winds. And if we want to simplify what this list is about, it's about our experience of hope and fear. So I just want you to bring to mind a situation from your own life or your own practice that you won't have to share with anyone. But a situation where there's something you want and maybe there's something you're afraid of happening or afraid of losing. So it could be as simple as saying, I want to finish writing this screenplay, right? Or it could be something big, right? Like, I hope I age with wisdom and grace, you know? I think these contemplations work when it's something simple and specific. So I'm going to use something very simple and relevant to my life. I hope my flight to Chicago tomorrow morning goes smoothly. It could be that simple. So bring to mind something you hope for or want simply in your life. And then just see if you can frame it in your mind silently as a statement, like, I want blank, or I hope for blank. Just see what it feels like to Hold your seat in meditation and just feel the feeling of hope or wanting or longing.
And when you allow yourself to hope for this, what arises? Do you get caught up in thinking about it? Do you feel pessimism? Like, oh, that'll never happen. And then on the other side of this hope or this longing, is there any presence of something you fear? Like in my simple example, maybe I'm afraid I'll miss my flight. So is there a fear in this hope or longing as well? How do these two go together in this example, hope and fear? What are the qualities? What do you feel in your body? So a contemplation is just an open-ended mental exploration of some teaching or theme in the teachings. So whatever thoughts come up, you can note them. Maybe say, oh, that's interesting. And then just come back to this event or this longing in your own life, and just exploring the feelings of hope and fear. And so there's this phrase in the meditation teachings that I learned, holding your seat. And holding your seat in meditation, it just means being able to stay. Ani Pema Chodron says that meditation is about learning to stay. Just staying with uncomfortable experience, So what would it mean to hold my seat? As I work with this situation to stay present with hope and fear. Somebody mentioned the hopes and fears associated with purchasing a, a home. hopes and fears associated with making a flight. Whatever you're working with, what would it mean to hold your seat or stay 
with all the feelings of hope and fear. I'll just stay with this contemplation for one more minute. And whatever insights or thoughts that felt meaningful have come up in this contemplation, you can just note those. And we're just going to take two or three more minutes to return our attention to the breath, or if you prefer, open awareness meditation as a way to just resettle out of the conceptual mind back to presence with the body, whatever feelings or thoughts may have come up, it's good to give those a moment to settle. So when you feel ready, you can return your attention to the breath. If there's another practice that you would like to do for the last two or three minutes, like metta, loving kindness, you're more than welcome. If there's any way you want to bring your practice to a close, sometimes just acknowledging that you made it, whatever the experience was, that we put in the effort, we took our seats, we showed up, and that that effort alone has great benefit. When the gong rings, you want to offer a bow as a gesture of gratitude to yourself and your fellow practitioners. That's also something 
Some people do. But taking a moment to just acknowledge your practice and all of the other practitioners who've gathered this evening is a great way to end. <laughs> 